Hey everyone, I'm back with another video about the DJI NEO. Today I'm going to be showing you why this should be the first drone that you buy. On the left side of the screen, that's the Ray-Ban meta footage from my glasses. And on the right side of the screen, and now full screen, this is what you should expect to see out of the DJI NEO. All of this is filmed in 4K 30 frames. I haven't done any color grading or any video editing, so if you're a beginner pilot, this is the type of footage that you'll expect to see out of the drone. Off there in the distance, that's the city of Miami proper. I'm currently on Miami Beach on the northern end of South Beach at a park called Pride Park. Today I'm just going to be flying around the DJI NEO and kind of highlighting all the features that you'll expect to see in a manual, regular flight. These are the automated settings. It flies exactly how a DJI Mini or a DJI Air or Mavic will. So I'm going to be showcasing pretty much what this drone can do. Now off there this is facing east that's the ocean the atlantic ocean in miami and then i'm panning a little bit north right there that big building is the convention center and now i'm panning down towards the park so i think the dji neo is one of the best drones on the market it the camera quality isn't great but it's super cheap and it flies exactly like the other dji drones so in my opinion, the reason that it should be the first drone that you buy is because one, it's so cheap. And if you are, you know, interested in learning how to fly these other bigger drones, whether it's the Air or the Mavic, all the controls are the same. So you don't have to worry about crashing. You don't have to worry about all this stuff. It's so tiny. It's like 130 grams. It has prop guards. You don't have to worry about, you know, if, if you do crash, you know, which I've crashed a lot. It's, you know, very durable drone. And then on top of that, you know, you could be safe around people. You don't have to worry about, oh, if this falls out of the sky or if I hit something, it's going to cause a bunch of damage. So a lot of security in terms of safety. Now, here I am there, as you can see, maybe I'm flying with the DJI RC2, which is the built-in screen controller. I think that that's also the controller you could buy because if you want to upgrade to a different drone, you're able to just buy a drone and not have to necessarily buy a controller. So as you can see here, this drone is super tiny and super nimble. You could get into a ton of great areas or a ton of tight areas and you know, you have the GPS lock which makes it super safe and then you have a really really wide range of the gimbal control like as you can see there I was almost completely panned down with the gimbal you know I was able to get out of that tough environment pan the gimbal up and kind of continue on my flight so I'm gonna be hitting a ton of small gaps throughout this video um, kind of showing you just how you can fly this fly this drone like recreationally fly this drone as like a professional so like I said, the reason that this should be your first drone is because it's super easy to fly, it's super tiny, and you could really get used to the controls and kind of push the drone to its limits without really, you know, getting into any issues with safety or problems. So as you can see here, super tiny gap, able to hit that no problem, able to hit that no problem. I'm flying in sport mode. When you're a beginner, one thing you really got to mess around with is like the sensitivity of the controller settings, you know, being able to pan down and pan up with like a smooth cinematic motion, and then also being able to kind of like know how your drone is going to react in space. So here I am flying around the park. I'm trying to make some of the moves like cinematic. Granted, I am flying in sport mode, so sometimes it will look, look like a little bit jerky in terms of the camera movement but overall i'm trying to like paint this picture that if this is your first drone you know you really really could get really really good at flying if you kind of just spend some time with this and understanding the nuances of the control so i'm about four and a half minutes in i did kind of put it in some tough situations but throughout this video as you'll see i'm i'm going to challenge it even more so a lot of this stuff you're really not able to do with any other drone on the market. Maybe the DJI Flip, but it's still kind of a little bit bigger. The DJI Mini, I would never 
put it through a situation like this because it just doesn't have any prop guards. It could get caught in like a, a branch or a tree or anything that could cause it to crash. The Neo, I'm not really worried about, you know, bumping a tree branch or here or there just because of the prop guards. And then on top of that, it's so small that, you know, you really, you know, the probability of hitting something is, uh, is much lower. So here I am at a beautiful park called Pride Park. A lot of cool art around here. That's a, a cool little sculpture. Not too sure what it is, to be honest, but super unique. And then off there in the distance, that's the Botanical Garden on Miami Beach. Super cool spot. Um, and now I am here flying around the park, see if I hit any of these gaps here. I love this park because it's kind of low key. There's not really a ton of people around and there's a lot of unique opportunities to kind of fly through the trees, hit these little small gaps. So kind of going back to like why this should be your first drone. I mean, I know I've been talking about this a lot, but you know it's tiny it's really not that loud you could connect it right to that dji rc2 controller that controller also works with the other dji drone so you know if you if you get used to this drone and you say hey i want to get the mini or i want to get the mavic you'll be able to upgrade to that no problem so i kind of just want you to appreciate like the nuance of how i'm flying this drone you know, I'm I'm doing multiple different movements at the same time. So here, like I'm flying upwards, I'm panning the drone or the, the gimbal upwards, and I'm also flying forward. So a lot of the pilots we just call the we call these like dynamic shots. So multiple different movements composed into one. So here I'm flying down, forward, and I'm panning the gimbal up. So the more you kind of like, you know you increase like say the difficulty or you know you increase like the angles that's where you kind of get the best footage here i'm flying in super tight space like you really can't do this with any other drone on the market not only is it like a cool picture but while you're flying it's also like super fun to kind of like hit these little you know these little gaps you kind of push it to its limits so here i am flying around the park just went through the trees I started to um, basically just started to record in my glasses here so you're about to see a pop-up of what I see on my Ray-Ban meta footage so there I am sitting here I just am hitting some of these trees and then I'll tell my Ray-Ban metas like hey meta start recording so in a few seconds here you're gonna see a pop-up of my glasses so here I am flying around lining up a nice shot on the right hand of the screen that's the Ray-Ban meta footage so that's what I'm seeing like a, a point of view that's what I'm seeing out of my glasses so as you could see there you know I have my right or sorry my left index finger controlling the gimbal and then I have my two thumbs controlling the drone in space so you saw it fly over my head there panning up a little bit left stick or left thumb goes up that goes up in space and then I have you know my um my left thumb also left and right does the yaw and then the right thumb forward and backward in space left and right in space so here I am about to push it to a little limit let's see if I go back in the tree or if I decide to hit a little hit a little gap here so a lot of fun flying this drone I, I hope that you're getting like a picture of why I think this is just such a great drone whether you're a beginner or honestly whether you're a professional like I fly the Mavic a lot I fly the Air 3 a lot um, but a lot of the times like you know those drones are heavy those drones are bulky like you have to request the airspace if you're flying in like a regulated area you know you you got to look out you got to you know if that drone hits something if you hit a tree or you know it could cause a lot of damage so I love the Mavic. I mean, obviously the video quality is better. I love the air. You know, I like the optical zoom lenses, but you know, if, if I also just like love to fly too, and I like making content like this. So me, I, I mean, I'm reaching for my Neo more times than, than the other drones, just because, you know, quick launch, quiet, you could hit these cool little gaps, get cool little views. I mean, most people aren't using their video content for like, you know, a high grade, like, you know, real estate production. You know, this video quality is 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 better than, 
you know a lot of other stuff like you could technically still use this in like YouTubes you could use this for like b-roll content um, today I'm not really talking about any of the automated features or how you're able to like vlog with stuff but you know just flying this drone manually will get you really 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 good at flying all types of drones I kind of saw these people playing pickleball up on top of a um, of a rooftop I thought it was cool I think they're about to notice me like right about now they got a little camera shy but there they are they're ready to go ready to play a little pickleball but so here I am up you kind of up top I'm panning around I have the gimbal down I kind of want to show you you know this is this is how you really need to be able to fly if you want like your drones to look or your drone footage to like look semi-professional because anybody could get a drone you know and they could just like without moving the gimbal you know you could fly forward fly backwards a lot of the drones they have automated features so like yeah if you're in a safe environment technically you could get a cool automated shot but I've been flying drones for like almost a decade now and every time I use footage for a video that I create everything I do is manual because when you could fly manual and you could fly in like a cinematic view like you want the shots that you're able to get you don't really want to use these automated features and my whole point in this video is that if you have this little drone you're not afraid of flying it you're not afraid of crashing it you're not afraid of like pushing it to the limits obviously everything within like safety you know in, in a safety context but you are able to like really get a great feel for how drones or traditional camera drones move in space and the biggest thing is like just knowing how to use the gimbal a lot of people kind of like they're like they fly and they like the gimbal gets like really snappy granted I've been flying for like 12 minutes now I'm warmed up this is kind of just a video to kind of like just show you the controls but realistically like learning how to use the gimbal and flying cinematically is like that's how you really really need to to think when you're flying these drones you need your two thumbs and then you need your left index finger on that gimbal control to pan up and down now FPV drones are a little bit different that's when I like pinch the controllers but on these camera drones I fly with my thumbs as you can see there in the in the POV on the right with the Ray-Ban Meta um, but yeah just such an awesome play I mean you know they when you're flying in sport mode this drone lasts about 13 minutes here I am finishing up I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you know subscribe to the channel like leave a comment let me know what you think and hope you guys really enjoyed it so here I am landed now take care guys